So I'm Ken Thomas, um, Extreme Networks Web Data Analyst. Been working with Extreme since early 2015. Prior to coming to Extreme, I was with Oracle for about five years. Had multiple roles. At the end, I was I had my favorite job title ever. It was Knowledge Champion. I'm I may work on seeing if I can get that new title added at Extreme. <laughs> So lots of experience trying to make things better, and we are on track at Extreme to do things a lot better as we go forward. My name is Drew Claybrook, and I'm the community manager at Extreme Networks. Uh, that's a role I've had for about two and a half years. Uh, I started my career with Extreme in 2010, right out of college as a tech support engineer. Um, did that for a couple years, and uh, was asked to start managing our global services and support labs. Uh, that's something I actually still do a lot of um, on top of community management. Uh, my roles also include like server management. Um, there's some content that are on servers that I own, so uh, that led into running Google Search Appliance uh, after another employee left the company and naturally right into Kabea. So um, yeah, here we are. Here we are. So I'll start off and tell you a little bit about Extreme Networks and, and who we are. If you've ever been in a data center and seen a purple box with blinking lights and lots of cables connected to it, it was probably an Extreme Network switch. Uh, we are a company who, um, as of this year, have reached the legal drinking age here in the United States. We're 21 years old. Um, we were among the first, I think we actually were the first to introduce a uh, one gig ethernet switch to the market and shortly thereafter introduced a 10 gig switch. Um, with the acquisition of Zebra's wireless networking business, we can now say that we're a billion dollar company. That's something that we're proud of. Um, as you can see here, 2,500 plus employees uh, all over the world. Our headquarters is southeast of here a little ways in San Jose. and. Um, our 30,000 customers are in about 80 countries around the world as well, so um, yeah. Uh, another thing that we're really excited about and uh, use as a success story is that 100% of our service and support organization is insourced. Um, we tried outsourcing and it didn't go as well as some may wish it did. So. So whenever I talk about Extreme's implementation of Kaveo or our web properties in general, I use words like journey, framework is in the title of our presentation. Um, ben Carroll in earlier session this week used a phrase that I really liked and it was, your unified search is like a garden that you have to tend, which means you're never done. And another metaphor maybe is it's, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon that you run five times a day, which would make me really happy, because I'm a runner. So we're on this journey, and we know that we're gonna have to keep working in order to keep things getting better. Tied into that, we also are starting to do a little personalization. So we have multiple searches for different audiences and different roles, and we hope to keep making that better and better. So I've stolen uh, an expression from KCS that you need to search early and search often. And in order to do that, you need to have a unified search that works well. So here's our list of searches. Um, actually, I left a couple out. There are a couple that I forgot about, but we've got our public search on the corporate site. And then our new-ish support portal has a search that all this is powered by Caveo. On the portal, there are two specific searches that are kind of narrowed down, the download search and case deflection search. And then last but not least is our internal search in the service cloud for our engineers. Uh, a little bit of stats, we've got 1.5 million items in our index, and we use almost every flavor of connector that Caveo has to bring in all that information with 16 different sources. So with this slide, we were not sure if we would get a chuckle or gales of laughter or um, the sound of crickets chirping in the darkness. So it's good to see that you guys have a little bit of a sense of humor. Most of you probably have seen this skit and were not aware that Christopher Walken has such a passion for unified search. Well, you didn't know that because probably he doesn't. 
Ken um, and I both uh, have cowbells that we talked about bringing and decided that probably the TSA wouldn't like that in our carry-on. Um, I guess you could use that as a weapon if you needed to <laughs> or wanted to. You're probably wondering how this can fit in, and it does. So in that skit, Christopher Walken and what's the other guy's name? Will Ferrell. Will Ferrell. He, the, both of them had a passion for the cowbell in this song. The rest of the band, not so much. So at Extreme Networks, we have a passion for Unified Search and for Caveo. And the only prescription is more. <laughs> so let me tell you a little bit about our public search and how we got to where we are now with it. Um, it started out very, uh, we were just really disjunct. Uh, what's the word I want to use? You had to go everywhere. It, yeah, it sucks. Um, so. Uh, you go to our website, you try and search, and you might get results, you might not, depending on how many pieces of content had to be inspected. Um, just the search engine that was part of uh, the website framework just wasn't robust enough to handle a site of our size. Um, most of the time it would give you a 500 error, which is not the experience that we wanted to present for our customers. Um, if you were trying to search documentation, you had to be on the documentation site to search that. Um, it often didn't return the most relevant results. You'd get things that were years old. It just wasn't up to the task. Um, at some point, we tried to slide in one of our, uh, some unused space on a Google search appliance, and that helped a little bit, but it's very difficult to customize. Uh, there's not really any connectors for it out of the box. There's a Salesforce connector, but it's kind of black magic, and you don't know how that works. Um, so we were eager to get Caveo, and that's actually the first place we put Caveo was on our public website. Um, that was kind of criticized a little bit. People thought that we did it backwards. Um, it, and it feels that way because you want to test that experience internally first to make sure that you can iron out the kinks and know what to expect. But when it is literally not working at all, we had to do something there, and that's what we did. Um, with that, we were able to pull together all the sources that we wanted to present, which Ken mentioned some of. Um, GitHub is a unique one. Uh, that's one that we had to do some really inventive um, filters so that we didn't crawl every um, new push to code and uh, commit. That, that would have been, I think, we got yelled at because there were over a million uh, commits in there at some point, and everything had a whole tree. It, it was a mess. Um, but with this, we allow our customers to get better uh, filtering. Uh, better sorting and um, just overall better results. And I feel like there should be a plug for like Papa John's in there somewhere. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's public search. Moving right along into the portal search. So the portal search is more of a technical type search and it's in our support portal, which is relatively new. Um, it was in beta for quite some time. I have a slide that shows you can see where the traffic spikes up when we released the floodgates. This search most of the sales and marketing stuff can't be found in this search. It's all technical for customers and partners. One really neat thing about this, we expose some functionality. When you're logged in, you can search and it'll find your cases and downloads that you're entitled to. So uh, steal some thunder from a slide later. Last month, the top thing that people clicked from this search were cases and downloads came in second. So we hope to continue to provide that. So the navigation to cases, several clicks, if you know the case number or part of it, simple search that's on every page and you're there, one click. So we did not predict that, but it gave us information that maybe we should do more of that. So I mentioned the disjointed array that we had that was uh, searching across the organization. One of them was our community, the hub. And as the community manager, I wanted to make sure that the content there is also included. Um, we index this in kind of a unique way. Get Satisfaction is the uh, platform that this is powered by. And they do have sitemaps, but we didn't want to use the sitemap because that can be slow and you don't necessarily get uh, the keywords that you're looking for. So like if, if this uh, topic is answered or pending or closed, we kind of wanted to know about that. Why? Because if it's answered, we can boost that in the results because you're more likely to go ahead and find an answer there quickly. If there's one that's still in progress, you know, it's not necessarily pushed down on the stack, but we don't want you to go there yet. Um, the other thing that I'll mention here, so you're probably looking at the two boxes. There's search the hub and search extreme. 
Uh, everything from this point down, I can't really control much of. So that search box, all I can do is change what it says. Uh, it only searches the hub. That's part of the Get Satisfaction platform, and we have to deal with it. But everything above is just HTML. I own that. I can do something about it. So I was able to try and make that top line on the header of our site look a lot like our corporate website. So I was able to put the Caveo um, Magic Box or Omni Box there. Um, and we don't really track what place a customer or a user is coming to us from, but it's something that we know that we need to add in so that we can try and see where people are coming from and how they find us and interact with us. Um, so if you are a networking aficionado, join us on the Hub. I'd love to have you. You can uh, join our other 5,000 members there. We just crossed that number about two weeks ago. So. Awesome. So I forgot to mention this when we started. Please feel free to um, raise your hand or say, hey, Ken, Drew, and ask us a question. But if, it, if it's a hard question, we may hold it till the end. Um, we, our presentation should take about 30 minutes. I think we're going a little bit slow. Um, <laughs> Maybe. But we have 15 minutes at the end to um, answer questions. So our case deflection search is built into the Extreme Portal. And compared to where we came from, which was a flat form that was really long and zero chance of case deflection, this is a, a brave new world. So off on the right-hand side in the first tab, we show um, initially two help articles, which have gotten a lot of traffic from Caveo, basically how to log a case with us. And then as the user enters in the information, Caveo kicks in again and starts to give more relevant content. I did volunteer yesterday for the thing that I forget the exact name of, but making the long queries more effective. So hopefully we'll get in with that pilot so we can make this work even better. So we get long-winded descriptions sometimes, and that is a problem for a search. And we're using some interesting partial match to try to make that work as good as it can currently. Um, that, like I said, is a continuous improvement cycle, and we have a slide about that coming later. A lot of times people don't want to see more than one search box, but one place that we do have a second search box in addition to our main search is on our downloads page on the portal. And the reason behind that is because, well, for one, we don't necessarily want to do predictive uh, suggestions if you're plugging in a serial number. We don't want all of your other serial numbers to get there because it'll become confusing. But that is something you can put in. If you plug in a serial number, um, some magic happens in the background and the system knows what type of platform that's on and can present you with the results for that platform, the download files. Um, you can filter on those with release dates. We've got tags, so if you want to find the latest version, you can do that. Uh, we even have recommended versions and beta tags as well. And uh, there's a link there that you could click on to tell you what those tags mean and to find out how we make our decisions for um, a recommended release. The uh, downloads are also tied in many cases to your support contract. So if you don't have a contract, or the system at least thinks you don't, you're prompted to request access. What that'll do is send you through a case creation process kind of quickly so that we can be notified that we either need to check our information or send the sales team out so that we can ask you to pay up. Uh, so um, there's also history included, and that's not necessarily a piece of Caveo, but it's important to include that so that customers can kind of follow their own breadcrumb trail, and so that our support engineers can see what people have downloaded or tried to download um, when it comes to support. Awesome. Question from the back. Quick question on that workflow. Is that generating leads for your business or? Someday. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Someday. Not at present. No. Yep. We have a couple opportunities for things like that. That They were on the board, but just didn't make it into the first phase. Great question. So last but not least is our internal agent search. It's probably the most powerful Caveo search that we have for our engineers to help them solve cases more quickly and find answers better, stronger, faster. Um, two things about this that I think are the best. Um, one has to do with the case context. So the search can be launched two ways, from the tab in Salesforce or directly from the case. When it's launched from the case, Caveo keeps track of that case. And it adds buttons so that the engineer can quickly attach and detach items to that case without leaving the search 
awesome feature. Um, the next favorite thing about this is if you use Salesforce Knowledge, I think most of us do from the show of hands this morning, Salesforce Knowledge can't be searched in the archive in the native Salesforce environment. So if you have a large archive of knowledge, occasionally people need to look in that, especially the internal engineers. So with Caveo, we were able to make that possible. So that was one of my complaints when I first started working with Salesforce. How do I search the archive? I couldn't. So it, by default, it's turned off, but it's an easy filter, and the engineers can quickly see and find stuff in the archive. So I realized I didn't quite complete myself when I was talking about how we index uh, the hub, our community. Uh, we didn't want to use the sitemaps. We do it through Salesforce. There's a Salesforce integration. All the data is fed into Salesforce, the topics, the statuses, and whatnot. I talked about why we didn't do that, but not how we did it. So yep. we do it through Salesforce, and it's a much faster process to crawl the database directly than individual pages. Absolutely. Worked out great. What do you guys use for like engineering changes? Do you use like Jira or some sort of? So our bug tracker is a Homebrew, Homebrew. Um, okay. and we index it through the MySQL database connector. Yep. And is that in this? Somewhere. For the internal agent search, tracker. it is this tracker. Yeah, okay. that's the name got of the. It. Okay, got it. Thank you. For our internal users, we can use strange vernacular because they they work for us. So next up, we're going to look at some analytics, and we pulled stuff from everywhere. I got a little Google to throw at you, some Caveo analytics, and some of the data secretly comes from Salesforce reporting too. So if we look at internal search, it's probably where we get some of the most unique information. All of us are kind of familiar with the out-of-the-box Caveo analytics where you can look for gaps and things like that. But with the internal search, it's the last search that we rolled out, and we can use Caveo analytics to measure our adoption. So we can find out which engineers are using this new search tool that's awesome, most of them. That's like 80 to 90 percent last time I looked at it. Um, who's attaching the most? So we have two ways to do that, one through a Salesforce report, but we can also get it from here. So we have a way to see if one measurement is wrong. Um, how many, then we get into the standard stuff. How are our searches doing? Are there any gaps? Um, what are the top filters that our engineers are using? So for May, Knowledge is the number one. That's the, the thing that they attach the most to the um, owners of the case. And Tracker came in second. So it's good insight. So for our public search, this is more standard. So since we're, I think we're moving a little bit slow, I'll probably gleam it over this one fast. But this is just your standard Caveo type stuff. Um, are there any gaps? Um, what's the most click thing? I have another slide about this, so we'll go quickly. This is the fun stuff. So this one is hot off the press as we um, whip this up <laughs> right before the conference um, with the help of our CSM. Looking at the machine learning for our public search, this is, um, I've already told this embarrassing story once today. We kind of forgot to turn on machine learning for a couple of the other pipelines. We've been busy. We've been buying companies, and it's <laughs> been chaotic. So the public is the only place where we have the machine learning. So since machine learning, excuse me, since we launched public search, overall, 54.6% of the things that people clicked on in our search were boosted by machine learning. That's a pretty good stat. I think we're like ahead of the curve a little bit. Looking at May alone, that was 64%. So I don't have a full trend, but you can see all time versus last month, we're going up. So our machine learning is working. Um, I have another slide where we can see even some more um, data about this. So I took our top item that was opened from search last month and kind of did a mini deep dive on that. So that item by itself, 61%, 60.6, it was boosted by machine learning. And then we looked at the average click rank for that for last month with machine learning versus no machine learning. 2.5 without, 1.2 before. So that's almost one whole step up in the search results. And so machine learning is awesome. 
So this is um, an audience participation slide. Google, ignore Google at your peril. If you talk about search and you don't mention Google. You're doing it wrong. <laughs> that, that's a problem in and of itself. So we made a decision early on in our KCS adoption and bringing in Caveo. We wanted our knowledge to be free, available to anyone, found in any um, search engine, not just ours. So first, who has public knowledge available to Google? Anybody? Okay, looks like about half the room, maybe a little short. Next question is also audience participation. For extreme networks, how much of our traffic, we'll just say sessions, how, what percentage of our sessions do you think? Just yell it out. Come from Google. More. more. More? The more. So we have smart people in our class. Yeah, so over 80% of our user sessions come from Google. Google is like the ultimate source for sending people to us. Um, when you look at everything else, the next biggest thing is 6.3%, and that's your direct link wow. clicks. Um, tied in there is our public site and the community. Um, I think our GTAC knowledge site is, because it's part of it, we're not going to see it. But yeah, 80%, that's huge. Right. So if you imagine, we have another slide. We focus on these small little slices, but Google is king. If, we, if that information wasn't out there, some of those people might have made it to our doorstep. But what's the first thing anyone does when they want an answer? Usually they use Google. So, um, I'll, I'll go back. I'll run, no, I'll run through this one too. Cool. So, it goes to show like the power of Google, and I've got a story about that. What we're looking at here is um, it's our combined number of sessions each uh, row. The blue is from the hub. The red is from our knowledge base. The purple line there is the from the new support portal. And I'm going to stand on this side. Uh, the green dot is our number of cases opened. So. Um, we use that to kind of self-impose a, um, a goal of uh, sessions to cases. That number is 30. We want to see 30 user sessions to X number of cases, to, to, to one case. Uh, as of May, we were at 28. So to go back to the importance of Google, you're probably wondering what happened here in this period of time in May last year to uh, the beginning of this year. Uh, Something happened with Google's favor towards all things get satisfaction. We completely fell out of the index. Only a handful, maybe 70 irrelevant topics were in the index, period. Um, so I noticed it pretty quickly after a recurring um, service ops community review and reported it. And like, well, that's weird. Let's check our Google tag implementation. Let's check these things. And none of it really seemed to be the problem. Um, and then other users started reporting it. And we spent a lot of time, I worked really closely with a lot of their engineers and developers. And what they ended up doing was improving performance on the site and adding uh, more canonical links and better metadata. And magically, Google was happy again. Um, each one of these dots is one week. So there was a period of about eight or nine days where three, at least three of our most viewed, consistently most viewed topics were back in the index and it jumped our traffic. It just completely spiked it. Um, and I think that is here um, for that short period yep, of time. Yeah, probably. So, um, so yeah, so never really underestimate Google. Question. Why did your self-service uh, traffic grow so quickly? Well, so, this. which one do you mean? The red one? The red one. So it looks like we're finally I knew the, the party had to end sometime. When we launched GTAC Knowledge, traffic from Google and from other sources, it just took off. And every single month, up, 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 a little bit of noise. You know, just like Christmas went down. But you know, nothing can grow forever. So maybe we're at our plateau. Maybe we'll have some more. We don't know. But our knowledge was r really well received when we um, released that. Did you guys do a lot of promotion, Ken, like internally, like with your customer base to tell them about it? Like, how did you get the word out? There were emails that were sent out through like the marketing databases okay. and whatnot to make sure our yeah. customers knew. Um, I will say here, this is the new portal. Um, we launched that um, <coughs> in January, I believe it was, and you also see a rise in cases here. 
that was part of a acquisition. So we started putting more cases into the system. Yep. It's not, it didn't rise because of any other piece there. It was just because we had more users. Another question in the back. So how do you view, you know, traffic coming from Google versus, you know, the rich experience you're building on the website? Do you see it as, you know, conflict? Do you need to embrace it? That second thing. Okay. But then once they land from Google, <laughs> Are you trying to say, okay, well, now let them, let's make them use the data search we have on We're still growing into that sort of analytics, and to let a cat out of the bag, we're kind of in flux. We have our old knowledge base, which is findable in Google. We have new, prettier, more awesome, feature-laden knowledge in our new portal, but we haven't turned that loose to the wild yet. We have to retire our old site do a bunch of work to make sure that's all smooth, that Google doesn't get mad. I think if Google we doesn't have, do this. Yeah. So at some point, we will, um, that red line will go away and the purple line will grow because our knowledge that's in the new format, it's exactly the same content from Salesforce. It's just in a new platform. So we've got, we've got our work cut out for us, but. That's a good question, and I think we'll, as we start to mature and have just one knowledge base, it'll be easier to do some of that. A couple of more questions, right? So in terms of the metrics you track, like conversion rate or, or I don't know, what the click-through rate or the click rate, et cetera, Google versus native search, have you done any comparison? And my second question is, if that much of traffic is coming from Google, how do you justify it to management? Like, no, we need to invest in Coyo, we need to invest in you know, better search on our website. How do you? Well, we were lucky the internal search was so bad, it was not a hard sale. <laughs> yeah. So that, that, that part was easy. And we really haven't compared the, the first part too much yet. But I, I think we will down the road. But with Google, it's usually they just come in, find what they are looking for, hopefully, and if they leave, that's okay. Whereas if you come to the support portal, maybe you're doing something different. Um, for the hub, actually, the number one search is just people, they haven't bookmarked us, and they just use Google to get there. And I personally do that a lot, too. For I know pay. my mom does that all the time. Yeah. Like, why are you searching for Amazon? Just type Amazon, and it'll go there. Have it. <laughs> really good questions. Thank you. I need to go quick. Yep, we're running out of time. So when you take away Google into direct links, there's a little bit of the pie left, but we analyze that slice of the pie too um, because we have more control over it. And if you look at the GTAC knowledge referrals for last month, the number one thing was a really bad page we're going to talk about. The second was our public search. So extremenetworks.com slash search, that's Caveo on the public site. So <laughs> the number two referral to knowledge was, was our search, so that's good news. You also see some really powerful cross-pollination. The community, Drew site, sends a lot of traffic to the knowledge base because we link back and forth, um, and there are a lot of good reasons for doing that sort of thing. So let's move on. I'll let you have this one, Drew. Yeah, so we already talked about referrals and importance of that, but when we look at referrals to the community, the two that really stand out are, of course, number one, which is our Caveo search on our public site. Uh, portal search is number six. So when you see that EXTR search, that's what we're looking at. Uh, the GTAC knowledge site is, as Ken mentioned, that's our older um, PKB in Salesforce. And that's the one that we push. That's where people get to us from Google. And because of that whole cross-pollination thing, you'll see it show up in uh, two and nine and 10 or links from, uh, I believe, our mobile site, mobile both site. of those are. Yep, so we, got, we have a pretty large number of mobile users too. So this slide is pretty interesting. It's also one of our good trends. So we, we have one chart that's not a good trend, but it's, we, you need to have the data so you know where you need to improve. So for our cases, they come from the phone or from the web, and we track our ratio of what's from the web. And you can see since FY1707, there's been kind of a slow upward trend more and more to the web. So this is good because on the phone, you have zero chance of any sort of deflection. But on the web, you've got a chance for helping them out without them logging a case. 
So another piece of data that we look at that's related to this whole success thing is the knowledge feedback. So our knowledge feedback is really random, um, but we're usually around 80% positive, which, which is good. And um, we have a, a colleague in our team who watches this religiously, and the positive and the negative feedback, she takes action on this. So I get emails every once in a while for articles that I helped improve, and she'll say, we got positive feedback, somebody loves this, good job. And that sort of thing just makes you more um, likely to keep doing KCS, which is not just writing, it's improving and tweaking and making it better. So, and this is available. Um, yes, no option for any time you view one of our articles, even if you're anonymous. So looking at the um, case deflection, case creation, there's a lot of data on this slide. Um, you can see where the, the top screen is kind of since the beginning of the year and the number of queries and the clicks that we've had. The clicks are so small you can't see them on the chart. So we, we have to work on that. Um, but 4,300 or so people came in in May, and only 2,500 actually logged cases. That data is from Salesforce directly. So about 40%, for some reason, maybe a technical problem, maybe they looked at an article and just knew that there was another answer. We're, we're digging into that. Um, but our case creation, our case deflection, the click count is really low, less than 1%. And that's an area where, where we need to work on. So talking about case deflection, we have a really good framework here where we can try to make that number better. We partnered with our success manager and professional services to set up some custom events so that when the product family and the subject and description, the short and long text for the case, when data gets put in there, we can boost or um, unboost things based on that data. So we currently have it set up that our KB how-to, which is um, the how-to type articles, they get boosted when just the product is selected. When product and subject or product, subject, and description are all present, then we boost our solutions, which are our answers to problems. So as we add more article types, we can adjust this logic. And all this can be done on the fly in the cloud with no IT assistance. So we have a great framework, but we, we need to work on this continuous improvement cycle. Um, looking at the type of things that we try to do based on our analytics, the top one is something I brought with me from Oracle. And I, I saw it mentioned in another pres presentation earlier today. If if you show a result that's two years old and it is the perfect answer to your problem, you're going to look at that and say, that's two years old. Is it still right? Is there more to this? So when we look at our top items from Google and from Caveo Analytics, that's my job. And I take the top items and I go look them up. How old is it? If it hasn't been updated in a year, I will contact the owner or someone in that team and I'll say, look, we need a currency review. Please look at it, update it if it needs anything. If it's perfect, publish it again anyway. <laughs> so that it, so it gets yeah, a new just date. Put that last modified date. <laughs> so that's our currency program, and it's um, I think it's worth the effort because old information is it's just not trusted by most technical audiences. So the next thing are gaps. They're mirrored number of things in Caveo that help us find gaps and things that might need help, and we use those and do things. Same with the thesaurus and synonyms. So we're almost to the end. And I know we're all that stands between you and lunch, and going back home, probably. So this is what we are hoping to do more of in the future, um, just by ourselves and also with Caveo. So we want to do more reviews and improvements. We desperately need more usability testing. I believe, and don't quote me on this, that part of the reason why our case deflection clicks are so low is our flow needs to be readjusted. That little thing is off to the right-hand side. I've got a technical issue. I'm not looking at that. I just want to get it submitted so that it can get solved. So I'd like to change that flow and at least make the list 
front and center before you go to the next step. More in your face. Yeah, not not too in your face, but hey, oh wow, you know, you at least have to look at it. So more root cause analysis. We have some things we want to build with Caveo. I would love to have a duplicate content finder when an, an engineer writes a new article that it finds a list of things that are similar and allows them the opportunity to not create the duplicate without having to change their workflow. We'd like to do more with our bugs. That's a, that's a beer topic. Um, universal product attribution, I think everyone has struggles with that. We have some attribution that's really good for silos of our information, but for a search to be effective, you need to be able to, at Oracle it's called a power view, where you say, I'm using product one, two, three, don't show me anything else. And you have to have that universal attribution scheme for that to be possible. That's, that's on our to-do list, it's a big one. Um, We've got some SharePoint work to do, and of course we want to continue to partner with Caveo to make things more awesome. That sums it up. And that's all we got. <laughs> Thank you. So any more questions? I, we probably have a few minutes. Awesome. Anybody? Well, thanks for being attentive. <laughs> Finding time to a look at all the results and, and sort it out, but also um, everybody's busy. Like Ken mentioned earlier, we've got a lot going on as a company, so finding uh, time to work with other teams uh, to get things implemented is always an ongoing struggle. Um, you know, there's a lot that we do want to do, but just you know, sometimes we move at a snail's pace and just it doesn't work. Yeah. With your other team is uh, Karen and Susan on the content side. Yeah, with us, we're we're like. You know, <laughs> so that's team. Gonna be my question. So you work hand in hand with them closely. Mm -hmm. Yes, we're, we're the Karen service operations team. Karen actually sits right next to me. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's a great guy. It's our data guy in our most of these slides. They. And how many people are are involved in the Cuvio kind of project there? I have to think about it. So definitely the four of us on our team. Um, and then some from IT, of course, yeah. who are very involved. Should we point out we have some? Yeah, yeah. There, there's one in the audience back there. Um, we need yeah. about five more <laughs> of you. Yeah. So. Uh, okay, that'd be yeah, awesome. Right, yeah. <laughs> so, any other questions? Yeah. But I was going to say about the, the case deflection, we also have the same challenge that there's not too many people clicking on it. And uh, part of the reason is that it's, it's too far and it's in the bottom of our website. And yep. That's what I think our problem is too. So we're going to process and move it to this side. So as they type in their description, they see the results change and stuff. Yep. And maybe a room for improvement is that like a feature um, to, uh, to to leverage the long queries mm -hmm. to yep. be able to have as soon as we can. But another thing that I would think really just need to analyze more is, is the, the mindset. I'm looking for it's good for them to create the case. If you're doing self service, say, oh, this sounds interesting, and you want to click on it to, yep. to see. And if you got to the point that you Want to searches or you already have a little bit of case, then the title and the other results that are there in the top has to be really close match to what you're encountering. Yep. So, um, Same error message, at least. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm you know, trying to figure out what are the patterns that we can go to leverage to provide that kind of content at the top. Yep. Um, but it's going to be hard to keep that up. Yeah. <laughs> when we first rolled it out, we weren't quite as busy, and I did a lot of testing with real data from current recent cases. Pretended to be that customer, put in their family, put in their subject description. Did I get the thing that actually resolved the case? If I didn't, there's an action. Got to figure out why not. Most of the time, I did. So I think a lot of times, I wish I had a better handle on our KCS data, like how many are new and how many are rediscoveries or whatever the current KCS terminology is for that, because that's a factor. Um, new issues, there might not be anything that helps. And then if you have a small number of new issues, that your, your clicks are going to be low there. 
So we, we've got the same problems, which is trade business cards and see how it would work <laughs> on that. But I would like to see in our flow the, the results, maybe even just temporarily, hide the button to go to the next screen when they stop typing somehow show it better. Some way to push them in the right direction. Let's see. At Oracle, we actually went through a phase where, and Drew's used to this, I always talk about, because Oracle, there's still Oracle in my brain. At Oracle, there was a phase where we opened an article while logging a case. That will not happen as long as I'm at Extreme. <laughs> if it does, you know, I'll pretend to have Tourette's syndrome or something like that, because it's, it's, <laughs> it's not gonna be, you'd never want to do that. Don't force someone to read something before it, they can. It's really progress. aggravating. I hate sites that do that. Yep. So they would, the, 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 the site workflow would force you to. Look it would open the number one result. Oh. Yeah. 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 Who thought of that? This, it was. A, I hope it's gone now. But um, don't do that. One thing I know, I've seen it just in my personal experience. All the type in description that you know, some of these websites says three possible solutions found, it, and it just shows up. Yep. True. So when we solve that, we can make a million dollars. Well, Greg shared some tips yesterday in his session about things that we know that we have, because we have the ability to see so many customers and what implementations are working, there are some best practices that are emerging around from this around titles, extracts, um, you know, making sure that the content is changing as you are typing, things yep. like that, that are, will help people generate and understand that this is not just static content that's there, that should definitely help uh, drive click-throughs as well. Yeah. And I think a lot in our environment, a lot, our people use our knowledge base a lot. And if you stay up to date on the knowledge base, you know everything. Like we weekly publish a list of all, everything that's new and that gets a lot of traffic on the community. It's a lot of feedback into the articles too. Yeah, so if, if you follow the knowledge base in the community closely, why would you look at that? It's like, yep, yep, I read that, read that. And it's like with our old search on the public site. If it hasn't worked for you for six months, you, if you keep using it, there's, you need probably to go talk to someone because you know it's like you keep doing it and Oh, it didn't work again. <laughs> yeah. So it needs to be successful, and they need to know that it's successful. So. Well, great. Thank you both, gentlemen. Yep. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.